It's been a long day, seemingly endless debacle after the other. You see, his family is different than mine. A single mom with six kids in a minivan, loud reggae music, snack food, cans of soda, no rules. Well, maybe just one, no negativity. To me as a child, I idolized his family, no matter what they faced. And I assure you, they faced an onslaught of trials and tribulations. They always stayed positive and they faced it as a family. So different to me, but again, that was all part of the appeal. As the day wind down and dinner was had by all, each family member found their own space in a large house. I was staying the night, and with backpack in hand, Travis led me to his room. A medium-sized room with white walls, no posters, pictures, or art. Odd for a 13-year-old boy. An unmade bed with piles of clothes. We found comfort in video games. Talk of girls that we knew from school. As the hours passed, most of the house had fallen asleep. Travis and I tell stories of alien abductions, of our animal spirits, and of our superpowers. This goes on until he remembers a stash of VHS movies in his closet. He calls them trauma films. I stutter the phrase back to him like some broken parrot, not sure what they are or even if we should be watching them. After an exhaustive search, he becomes sidetracked by another treasure and I, don't, and I lose interest myself. It's late. I don't have a place to sleep, but he gives me a sleeping bag and comments on how soft and comfortable his carpet is. With the lights on in a silent room, we sleep. At least he does. My mind races. My imagination burns like fire. Outside of his room, I hear someone walking down the hall. I pay no mind. I'm startled, though when the footsteps stop at the door. Travis is asleep, fast asleep. I watch the door vigilantly, as if the person on the other side would come bursting through at any moment. But not too long after, they turn and walk away. In my head, I reassure myself that it was probably his sister, Stacy. You see, she's a little weird. I relax again, but again, the footsteps approach. I hear each step distinctly as they settle just outside the door. Curiosity has got a hold of me. I roll from the sleeping bag to the bedroom door, six feet away. I listen for a few seconds. I hear breathing and the faintest sound of feet on thick carpet. It's only just behind the door. A gap below the door shows a sliver of light from the hallway. Turning my head to the side, I peer with my right eye below the door, shocked by what I see. I just hold my gaze as if by some chance I'd rationalize the scenario that unfolds. No feet, no person, nothing. It's an empty hall. As I back away from the door, so do the footsteps on the other side. I go wake up Travis. I explain incoherently that I hear footsteps in the hall. But no one is there. He pauses and mumbles. The house is haunted. And an instant later, he's back asleep. And I'm left terrified and wide awake. As the minutes creep by in an endless night, I listen to countless steps in the hall all night walking to the door and then walking away. I don't sleep. Instead, I wait for the dawn to come, thinking that the sun will subdue whatever compels the spirit in the hallway. 4 a.m. and the sky shows its first sign of dawn, a distant orange light and a blue horizon. But with dawn comes the irrepressible urge to pee I weigh my options. It's either I pee myself or I open the door to a hallway that's been confirmed to be occupied by a ghost. I look under the door again to work up the courage. Nothing. I pause to listen. Nothing. 
I grab the door handle, but I don't turn it, almost like I'm bluffing the ghost. I hold my hand on the knob for a few moments longer. Then I turn it slowly. It creaks as the door is now open. Pulling the door towards me ever so slowly, but desperately, full of fear and piss, I put my head through the gap and view the hall for the first time since the night before. It's just a hallway. No ghouls, no monsters, just doors and carpet. I run to the bathroom to do the deed and shudder with relief. Flush. No time to wash my hands. I turn to leave the bathroom as I notice in the thick hallway carpet a track of footprints leading right to the door of Travis's room. As quietly and as quickly as possible, I move back to the room, close the door behind me as it slams unintentionally. Travis is still fast asleep. I lay back down on the sleeping bag and wait for the house to wake up, the whole time listening for footsteps in the hallway. <laughs>